and welcome to Model Kit Stuff. Today we have uh, another tool review and we're looking at this. This is the EBMA Hobby and Craft Armoured Fighting Vehicle Paint Stand. Um, and this is how it comes. It comes in this box. Uh, in the UK it retails for £10. Um, and these people, you see at a lot of shows in the UK, so you can avoid the... Uh, the delivery expense by buying a, a, a model show. So um, I've certainly seen them at the Stoke show before. They were at Bolton this year. They were at Telford last year. So they certainly get around. Um, they do a lot of stuff for um, um, railroad and they do various storage stuff and they do a lot of paint stands. Um, so um, I have, this is the fourth um, item I have from them. This was um, a, a gift. Um, so we will build it up and see what it looks like in this video and maybe even give it a bit of a test. So, um, it comes in this box, um, not all of their products come in, in a box, some of them come uh, just in a bag depending on what you've bought, but it's well packaged, um, it's got um, paper tape on here, um, so everything in, in terms of the packaging here is uh, recyclable, um, and there is some sticky labels here which is preventing me from opening it. So I've not looked inside the box as yet, so we're doing that together. Okay, now the instructions for this you get on their website and are downloadable as a document. Um, you go, go onto the product, select documents, and away you go. Um, this is clearly our base. So some of these parts have already been fully laser cut out and therefore there's no clean up of tabs, so that's nice. Um, got a support there and another one of those. Feet so it doesn't slip on your uh, board. That's just a bit of packaging, I think. Then we've got our little counters that move about. Two of those, and then this is our build face. And then a little strip tells us where to find the instructions, even has a little picture, which I think is fabulous. Um, there is a lot of thought goes into these products. So this is our base. The logo is pointing away from us. I'm just looking at these um, uh, little triangular pieces, or say little but the large, um, see if there's any differences, and there is. When you put them together, you can see that there is a slight difference there in terms of the slots. Uh, and that is due to this brace. So that would appear to be the middle one, and as these two are the same, I'm going to suggest that they're the end ones. So that's a way of checking you're getting the right one in place um, and then when you look at the instructions what it's asking you to do is put them on like so so we'll just dry fit everything to start with um, then you're going to put um, this on with that facing the top so this gap here at the top which ultimately is going to be the bottom okay. 
So if you line up the two sides, you can then line up. There we go, that fits nice and tightly. And then if we turn it around, this piece is gonna go on here like so. There you go, all slots together really nicely. Engineering is great. And then, like I say, that becomes the base. And that is your stand. So then you slot these together. So let's have a look at these. We can go back and glue it in a minute. So putting the pegboard to one side, we've got these little braces. Um, so we've got three different types, or well, two different types and three different uh, two of which have different sizes. So if we just take all these out for for now. So the first type of uh, brace we've got is this one here, which is just a little strip. And if I show you on here, um, it literally just slots in like that. Um, and something can then rest on it so that the edge of your vehicle or something like that is just adding a little bit of extra support. Um, but it's not the main rest, obviously, because it's way too narrow. So we'll have a look at that in a bit more detail later. Um, then what you've got is these, which have... Um, these um, support brackets on them. So you've got shorter ones and you've got longer ones and you put them together so that the pins are facing the same direction. And then these work by slotting in your pin board where you want them. That's interesting. I would say that that is upside down and should go in like that. So, no. so is that actually how the board should be used? With that at the top and that is the base? That would make more sense because it's less steep. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Right, okay. I'm being, I'm being daft. These pegs, once they're made up, just slot into place like that. So you can have wheels on there, uh, maybe the lip of some of something resting on there, and then wheels on another one. And obviously this bigger one gives you a little bit more support depending on the size of your vehicle. Um, and it could be, it could be, um, that you need bigger ones or smaller ones or a combination but the idea is that your vehicle then can sit on that um, without worrying about it falling off although i'm a bit worried that might fall off <laughs> okay right let's get it all glued up and then we can have a look at it a little bit more closely right then let's get this built so um, having identified that we've got um, a centerpiece that is slightly different I've stacked them in order so we can just now glue them into place into the base so I'm not going to put glue on the tabs I'm going to put glue on the um, bits between the tabs which means that we'll be keeping the glue inside the base and we won't have anything pushing through the bottom that's going to make a mess of my uh, cutting mats and it will be rigid enough ok 
Okay, then we're just going to clean that up with a tissue. And you could do, if you're worried about the strength of it, you could just run a bead along here just to strengthen your join, which is what I sometimes do with my uh, wooden ships when I'm building the frame. There you go, and that'll just add a little bit of strength if, you, if you've got some concern about it. Then we're going to put the middle one in. Go. None of this is going to get seen, so we're not too worried about aesthetics. Now, in the instructions, they'll tell you to use a, a set square to to get all these straight but what we're going to do in a minute is we're going to put the top plate on uh, and it can dry with the top plate um, in place and that will hold it all square Turn it around. I'm going to put some glue on our contact points at the back here. And we can now put that brace on, uh, and that's going to hold in square as well. Okay, right, well, now what we're going to do now is we're just going to um, place this on top, we're not gluing it in um, at this stage at least, and that's going to just make sure that we've got everything um, square while this is drying. Now we could glue it in at this point, but uh, Just want to make sure we've got everything lined up properly before we do anything like that. There we go. So we can leave that now to dry, and whilst that is um, drying, um, put this to one side, we can build up our tabs. So we've got these um, tabs here, they need cleaning up and they also need gluing together. So just take these off. It's just so we've got no rough edges, really. You don't even have to do it, most likely. Um, okay. There we go, 
make sure you've got no glue on the tabs because that's going to interfere with your fit. And just make sure you've got it nice and square. Yeah, and then leave it to dry. So I'm going to tidy these up and glue them all together. We've got a fair few of them to sort out. And then I'll come back to you when we're ready to do the last little bit of the build. Okay, I have made all the um, pegs for the pegboard. Um, and whilst they're drying, I've just left them in the pegboard to make sure that they're all square, which they are. One little tip is it's worth just putting a little chamfer um, on the corners there, just on the leading edges. It just helps with um, putting them in a bit easier. Uh, but once, uh, but the fit is really good once they're in. We do have a little bit of um, sticky back foam um, to make for feet, so we need to just um, cut this into four squares. Um, and then when this is all dry, we can just put them on and that'll stop it slipping about while we're working on it. I've not glued this on yet. I want um, this framework to all dry uh, uh, and be solid before I do that. So I'm going to leave it for a couple of hours and then we'll come back, glue this on, and then we'll have a look at how it works. Okay, this is uh, mainly drying out or dry enough for us to glue the top on. So I'm going to do the same thing as we've done previously and just apply the glue between. The tabs there that will just make any clean up a bit easier. Okay, so the fit of this is quite tight, so we're going to put the bottom ones in first and hopefully with the bottom ones aligned up that should make the others easier to press down into place. Make sure that's meeting down okay, which it is, so that is all good. So that is pretty much construction done. How this works is that you put the pegs in your pegboard, like this for example, and then you take your armoured fighting vehicle and you rest it, oh, we're a bit high now, let's go down one. You rest it on your pegs like so, which allows you to get in and paint. So you can get into the side, you can get into the top, obviously you can turn it around so you can get to, to the edges, it's really really good. The only thing you need to do is turn your vehicle around when you're working on the other side. I think it's really clever. 
Um, I would never have thought of of doing it at this angle. Um, I think it's really quite a clever idea. And you've got such a variety of pegs, so you've got smaller ones, so if you're working on 172 or something, your pegs aren't, aren't going to get in the way. So I think that's great. So actually, when you're working on it, the high side is what is facing you. So that's bringing it up to your eye line even better. There's a real advantage to that. This is, um, let's see if we can measure how what the height of that is. It's bringing it up 145 centimeters off the off the deck. So that's nearly six inches up. Um, so it's a lot closer for me to work at. I, I really like that. Um, and then in condition with the hand rest, I can get in and do detail work really quite easily. Um, you could store these other pegs on the board, um, or alternatively. Or alternatively, you could find a container to store them in, um, and you've got loads of space under here for, for them to be stored in out of the way. I think it's a great little product. I really like it. So, there you have it. That's the um, AFV paint stand from EBMA. I think it's a great little product. It's £10, um, so it's not expensive. Um, it, it's a really easy solution to work with, very, very convenient, and has the advantage of giving you height, which no other um, uh, jig really um, does it quite as easily as this. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm a big, big fan of this. Um, I, I'm looking forward to using it in anger and seeing how we get on. But there you go. If you are looking for some form of stand, this is something to consider. Um, I'll leave a link to the website below. You enjoy your modelling and I will see you very soon.